Hey guys, it's been a minute since I've done one of these sit down videos, but um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that something really, really cool happened um, a couple days ago. And I wanted to share with you guys on this platform how cool God is and what he did in my life that <sighs> that was just extra, honestly. Um, so January 17th, me and Seth were at my parents' house for a party and my aunts were there. And if you know anything about my family, which I'll just, I'll just give you the background. My grandma was a prayer warrior um, and she had the prophetic gifting. And most of my, I think like all four of my aunts have that prophetic gifting and then that prayer warrior like you know, there's some people that just like, they're just so incredibly powerful and they really claim the name of Jesus and they take up that authority. And I think that's just such a cool gift. And I, I get, I'm pretty good at like the prophetic stuff. I've always had dreams and kind of like, um, visions, or I would say like, I have a feeling when I was a kid, cause I didn't know what it was, but I was a believer. And so I kind of felt like God was talking to me about like what to prepare for and stuff. And I won't go down that whole train, but basically I come from a really great line of very, um, just powerful women. And, and only because God has given them the authority to claim the name of Jesus and ask for healing and prophesy and all that stuff. So I've had many times in my life where my aunts would say something and prophesy over me or pray for me or, you know what I mean? So... This day, in particular, we were at my parents' house for like a housewarming party slash birthday party for my mom and my dad because my mom's birthday's in January and my dad's is in December. And so they just did a joint birthday. And so it was a pretty, I mean, it was a good night, we, day, technically, it was a Sunday. It was after church, everyone was going to my parents' house to watch the game and, you know, give them a birthday present and all that stuff. But we were coming in on like after the game, they were kind of getting their stuff ready to go. And one of my aunts in particular, she watched me walk. And I haven't given you the background as much on here as I have on the Instagram page that I have, but I have dealt with chronic pain in my hips and my back for three years. I won't go into the full story specifically of that, but long story short, I have had one leg shorter than the other for like 15 years and my back has been strained because of it because my hips were off and then that meant my spine was off and the day like the year that me and Seth got married the nerves were exposed in the middle of my back that created just the worst pain in my life and that pain continued for three almost four years <laughs> and it was awful um so I was limping to go and see Seth and my aunt saw it and she was like, what's going on? And she kind of already knew what was going on, but in particular about today, she just thought it was getting better. And over the course of four years, it has gotten better going to the chiropractor every single week um, to get adjusted, going to um, like physical therapy and taking anti-inflammatory kind of herbs and medicines it's all kind of slowly gotten better. And my, my chiropractor was like, I see you eventually being completely healed, but you know, you'll always have to wear a little lift in your right shoe. And you know, you're just gonna have to kind of cater to this, this problem because we live in a sinful world and we deal with pain in this world. And I, I kind of had accepted that. I had accepted the idea that this might be my hip problem that that Jacob had, and he always walked with a limp to remind <clears throat> to remind him that he wrestled with the Lord. And this might be what I have to deal with, and I was content with that. But when we're going into a night where I know I'm going to have pain, it does kind of it hurts my heart. It makes me long for the day when I'm in heaven and there is no pain, because when I am limping the way I was that night. Um, I know I'm in for a long night, not sleeping, probably waking up at 3 a.m. in agonizing pain, screaming, crying, all that stuff, because it is so, it is so much 
pain, it, it's hard to even explain. My husband is the only one who's really witnessed that kind of pain, and the minimal amount of times that my parents have witnessed it, they have actually thought I should go to the hospital, but it's nothing that they can do other than give me pain medication, and I decided from day one that I wasn't going to do pain medication. And, uh, I mean, even ibuprofen I don't really take. I just breathe through it, and I cry, and I pass out, and I throw up from all the pain, but... I just decided I was going to lean so heavily on the Lord that it was going to be um, only through Him that my pain goes away, just in those spurts of time. So anyway, back to Sunday night, the 17th. My aunt sees me. I tell her what's going on, she asked. And um, she kind of started with just like, oh, I hate that you young kids are dealing with so much pain right now. I mean, you shouldn't be dealing with this kind of pain, which is kind of the whole phase I was in in the beginning of all this of just like why I'm 21 I shouldn't have to deal with if the you know airplane has a good enough arch in your back you know I shouldn't be worried about the type of shoes that I'm wearing and and so like it's so encompassed my entire life it was like I was 80 and I was 21 and I couldn't enjoy being married and young and just like getting to go on vacations and stuff like that because it always came down to when can I get my next adjustment and what can I do to kind of hold off that adjustment if I'm going somewhere for the week. Long story short, it's been a long journey and it's been so hard and so heavy. I've gotten so much closer to God in it, but at the same time, I was sick of it. And so my aunt, they were about to like leave. Her husband was kind of shooing her towards the door and she stops and she says, you know what? I feel like the Lord is telling me that we need to go pray for Courtney, and she was talking to her sister and my mom. And so me, my two aunts, and my mom go off into my parents' bedroom, and my other aunt hadn't, she hadn't heard that conversation, so I had to explain. She's like, what are we doing? And she's always up for, like, praying, and, like, she believes in miracles, and she is so just, like, such a spirit, spiritual warrior, such a Jesus, like, he, she's like, I claim the name of Jesus over your life, over your back, over everything. But she had no idea what was going on either. So she just like came along with us and she, I told her the story. And then my aunt, um, my other aunt who had asked for us to go into the other room had said, I felt like the Lord was telling me, you know, it ends tonight. It's, we're done with this tonight. We're going to pray and it's going, you're going to be healed. Um, and she had a little vial in her hand, and it was oil, which, if you don't know about the Christian faith, I will give you a brief understanding of oil. Oil does not make you, you know, it's not magical, it doesn't make you um, any more or less healed. It's just something, it's an agent that God has used in, you know, the Bible, and oil is such a significant symbol in the Bible. So, when she had it, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I mean, this is normal for my upbringing to have oil. My parents anointed our house with oil. They anointed me whenever I was a kid with oil. There's just a lot of just like symbolism of like, God, this is your domain. So anyway, she told us a story of where she got this vial. She had found on the internet, <laughs> which you can actually look up, I'm not even kidding. Um, this family that their grandpa had a, an, an old Bible. He'd had it for like 25 or 30 years and he was starting to notice like spots in the Bible like kind of like oil yeah oil in the Bible and at first they thought that the like his granddaughter had gotten a hold of the Bible and like gotten something in there but he started to realize that it was like getting everywhere and it was starting to kind of like saturate the whole Bible to the point of they ended up putting it in a bucket and it was overflowing with oil coming from this Bible. Um, it, I mean, if you want to look it up, you can be like the Bible oil in Georgia. But it's a sweet story and it's legit. And what happens is, I mean, what happened is that family was like, wow. It was like 2017. They were like, wow, this oil is coming out of our Bible and I mean it's significant God is doing something really cool so they started to like offer it to people for like anointing or healing mainly healing and so it just hit me this is a really cool moment um 
the year that the Bible started to leak oil was the year my back started to hurt, which is, that was just a little nugget for me. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. So my aunt had bought, bought, she didn't buy it. It was sent to her. So she saw this story and she wanted a, you know, a vial. And they said, just send us, you know, your address and we'll send it to you for free. Cause this is like Jesus oil really cool. <laughs> and so she had it for like a year. And I guess she's used it a few times and God reminded her it was in the bottom of a purse and it had been there for like a year and she forgot about it. Which I'm like, if you have Bible oil, why would you forget that that's in your purse? But it's fine. <laughs> um, so she, she was like, I was, you know, God kind of put it on my heart to pray for her. And then he reminded me of this oil and I heard him, you know, tell me you're going to use this on Courtney. And so, anyway, long story short, they ended up putting the oil where it originated. The pain originated in the middle of my back. And they prayed for like an hour. I mean, it was just so cool. It was like Holy Spirit. We were speaking in tongues. Um, at one point, my aunt um, actually touched my forehead with the oil because there has been, she didn't know this, but there has been a lot of mental anguish because of the pain, as you could, you know, already figure out that, pain can make your brain go a little crazy. And so, um, anyway, so that night, I mean, and even my other aunt who had no idea the actual medical reasons why my back was so messed up, grabbed my ankles and she just started praying and speaking in tongues and, and like claiming the name of Jesus over me and, and like that he has taken the stripes for my healing. If you don't know the Bible story, the, the gospel that Jesus went to the cross, yes, but then he went, he actually went to get whipped, th I think 39 times. And that is, he didn't have to do that. He didn't have, to, he, he, he was already on the way to save us, but he did that so that we could claim the healing that he can give us in this lifetime. And so I've prayed that prayer many times that you, you know, God, you've taken stripes for my healing. Please take away this pain. And I have not been healed yet. And so I, you know, God does things in his own timing. And I was just fully, you know, I was content with whatever God did. I fought to be content for whatever God did. <laughs> I'll be honest. Anyway, so she grabs my ankles and she's, she's praying and speaking in tongues, all three of them are, and I feel like my legs are warm and my back is warm. And that is just, if you're ever, you know, being prayed for healing, I mean, that warmth is a good sign. That means God's doing something. And so, I mean, that night I was kind of in this like, I'm scared to believe. I'm scared to believe this is actually what's happening because it felt like, Every time I prayed or somebody else prayed for me, it just didn't happen. And, like, I didn't want to doubt God's goodness anymore. So I, you know, I was just kind of like, I think something happened, but I'm not super sure because after we were done praying, they were like, stand up. And I said, well, if my, I mean, I think my leg grew. I think the leg that's too short and it's causing so many problems actually grew tonight. And I stood up, and the best way to kind of tell if you're off is if your shoulders are, like, off. And so I stood up, and my aunt was just, she was like, wow, it's, you know, perfectly in line. And usually you can you can tell. Um, and then she had me lay down, and she, like, looked at my heels. Like, she made sure my heels were together. <laughs> and she was like, I'm about, I'm about to start hopping around and cheering because I think that, I think you're right. I felt it, too, when I was holding your ankles. And, and so... That night was really like, I mean, I wasn't, I hadn't kind of, it didn't really hit me yet. And I wasn't super sure what had actually happened. But the next morning, we were praying so that I didn't have to go to the chiropractor the next day. I wanted to stay at my parents' house with everything going on in the world. I just wanted to be safe in my home, in my parents' home, where they have like a generator and water and stuff like that, just in case. And so... I really didn't want to go, but I woke up and I was still in some pain and it felt like my hips were actually off. And so um, the whole way there, I mean, we, we drove the hour and a half to get back to my chiropractor because he has been with me through everything and I wasn't about to like let him miss out on this moment. But I had no idea that it would actually be confirmed in that appointment. So he adjusted my hips, but I had told him before he started adjusting me, hey, just check on something. This happened the other night, last night, and, you know, I know you're a believer, so I just want you to, like, 
confirm it or, you know, be like, oh no, he hasn't done it yet, you know, and that's okay. So he, he checks me before and he, I mean, he puts my heels together, you know, bends my knees and like does his chiropractor thing to double check. And he's like, they're perfect. I mean, they're perfect. And I'm like, well, is it, does it mean that like it's actually grown or does it mean my hips are so off that it looks perfect? And he's like, I mean, it doesn't really work like that, but I can adjust you real quick and then confirm that. But I, I mean, he was getting a little shaky. And so, um, he adjusts my hips and he's like, no, it was just like a little bit rotated off. And that's like a normal person problem, Courtney. <laughs> it's just a little rotated off. And, um... I mean, he, he pushed around on certain things to make sure that there was no actual, like, real bad problems because of this being perfect. And every time he's like, does that hurt? Does that hurt? I'm like, no. And he just, <sighs> good. So he did it again. He checked my heels, make sure that they line up. And he's like, Courtney, that leg is the right length now. He said, take that lift out of your shoe because I, I'm gonna say it right now, you're healed. And I, I cried, I was like, oh, are you kidding me? And he's like, no, like, this is so cool. This is so great. I mean, he was getting misty and, cause we've been in this together every single week for like almost four years. And he's walked with me through the pain. He's, he's like prayed over me when I was crying. Cause like my sciatic nerves had swelled up so badly from that adjustment and, Oh, it's just, it's so cool because now it's Sunday and usually, that was Monday that he just, you know, finished the adjustment. Usually Sunday nights or this Sunday evening, I am so in pain that I'm like sitting on a heating pad or an ice pack, need a bath, and then I'm like crawling to the chiropractor the next morning. But I wore heels today, guys. I led worship and I, I feel great. I mean, I don't need to go tomorrow. So it was really cool. And his biggest thing was like, Courtney, I'm going to say this. God healed you. God healed you. And you needed to confirm it today, which is like good because now when the enemy comes at you and he will come at you because you're holding on to this miracle that happened, he will make you doubt. He will try to get in the way of the miracle. And so we, you need to stay in your word, stay in the Bible, really commit to knowing, knowing that Jesus healed you, that he is good and that he's, he, he did this miracle for you. And so I, I called my aunts after that and I, I was like, guys, it was confirmed. Like my leg grew that like specific amount of length in this one leg that it needs to be grown. And that's not natural. Y'all, that's not natural at all. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm still sitting in this and I'm overwhelmed and I'm so excited and I wanted to share it with you guys because if you're waiting on healing, it took me four years, but it could, it could have taken me longer and it could have been until I, you know, went home to heaven, but God is still so good and we're about to come into a kingdom era where miracles are about to happen all the time. And so I'm just saying, get ready because he is about to do some big things in your life and in this world. And I'm so excited to see it. So I hope you guys, you know, were encouraged by this video. And I, I'm just wanting to spread the good news.